Hi, I'm Pastor Joel with Right Response Ministries, and this is another episode of our show called Questions. Today's question is as follows. Is spanking mandatory for disciplining children? Is spanking mandatory for disciplining children? It's a great question. My answer is yes. Thanks for tuning in. (laughs) I'll go a little bit longer, but that is the answer. Of course it's mandatory. Uh, It's mandatory for a few reasons. First, it's mandatory because the Bible says so, because God says so. And I think the first thing that we need to recognize is this. You do not love your children, parents, more than God. You don't. You don't. And I think at the heart of, of Christian parents, those who would profess to be Christians, and I'm not saying they're not. I'm not saying they're false converts. I think some of them are Christians. They're just living in disobedience in this particular area. But for those Christian parents who do not spank their children, at the heart of it is arrogance. They believe that they are kinder, more benevolent, more provisional, more loving towards their children than God. God's word says that if we spare the rod, we spoil the child. God's word also says that the one who does not spank his child hates his child. (laughs) Here's another verse that I've I mean, it really just speaks to the, the graciousness and the mercy of God because you know, I would describe myself as someone who is gospel-centered. I have a lot of problems with other gospel-centered churches and pastors and organizations, but I would say that I am what I would consider to be truly gospel-centered. I don't have time to go into that, but let me just say this. Um, because I believe in the power of the gospel and that it's the only power, um, Well, it's the power of God, but through the agency of the gospel, the only power to convert hearts, to transform hearts, right? To remove the heart of stone and replace it with a heart of flesh. That's always going to be the answer, right? Because I believe that because I am a gospel believing man. I'm always going to be thinking about the gospel. And yet when it comes to disciplining children, think about this for a second. The Bible says that rebellion is bound up in the heart of a child. Rebellion, depravity. Sin, it is bound up, inter, intertangled deep into the heart of a child. Think of like a, um, a, a tumor, a malignant tumor, some kind of cancerous um, disease. If it's just on the surface of the skin, right, that's kind of good news. It's something that with some surgery, uh, we, we could probably easily remove. But, but if it's something that, that's that's bound up and tangled into the heart of a person. Oh my goodness. Then, then in most cases, I mean, you're just, you're done. It's, it's, it can't be removed. It, you're, you're hopeless. And yet the Bible says rebellion is like that, right? It is a cancerous, lethal tumor that is tangled up in the very heart of your son or daughter, but the gospel will remove it far from them. No, nope. the rod. What a merciful thing. I'm encouraged by that. I am so comforted that God would condescend to me in my simplicity as the most com- complex, infinitely wise being in the universe that he would in humility and, and, and grace, he would condescend to my level and say, hey, Joel, there is rebellion bound up in the very heart of your child. And it's hard to remove, but I'm going to make it real simple for you. The rod. Just spank them. Just spank your children. And I know you might say, well, that's, that sounds too simple. Well, yeah, there are other things that the Bible also says that parents need to do. Fathers have to train their children up, right? So there's instruction, not just discipline. That's one side of the coin, but there's also instruction, training, and teaching. Fathers, do not exasperate your children, right? Don't provoke them to anger, but train them up in the fear and admonition of the Lord. Instruction, 
right? So there's teaching. There's a lot that a parent needs to do. There's also protection, protecting them from things that would lead them astray. There's provision, providing for them spiritually and also physically, putting food on the table and providing for their education, right? So that you don't have to hand them over to the state where they're taught math and science and all these different things, but from a, a atheistic pagan worldview. No, like you, you need to train your children. You teach your children, homeschool your children, or if you can't, then, then, then fathers, you're going to have to work extra hard to be able to send your children to a private Christian school because what you can't do as a father is somehow opt out of giving your children a distinctly Christian education. So whether you outsource it by working hard and paying for, for it, tuition at some Christian school or whether you're working hard and not relying on your wife so that she can stay home full time to homeschool your children as a mom. Either way, the father is responsible for the children receiving a Christian education. But the point is this, you've got to instruct, you've got to train, you've got to teach, but you also got to discipline. So, so the rod is not the only way to remove rebellion from the heart of the child. It's not the only responsibility of the Christian father and the Christian mother. Um, there are other things, but it's a big one. Here's a couple other reasons. So the first reason you need to spank, it is mandatory. You can't just opt out for some other form of discipline, right? And I'm assuming that that's what the question's getting at. Is it mandatory? Implying, can I be a Christian, a God-fearing man or a God-fearing woman and discipline my children? I know I have to discipline them, but use some other means. And the answer again is no, you can't. No, you have, yes, you have to spank. Number one, because the Bible says so. And it's not a metaphor. Spanking the rod is not a metaphor. It is literal. The Bible's talking about spanking, actually spanking your child. And God does something in spanking. And, and at a practical level, this is, I, I think, why. One reason why you need to spank, getting some practical reasons, not just because the Bible told you so, although that is the number one reason, but getting some practical reasons for why the Bible might tell us so. Number one, um, spanking allows you to start discipline in the home far sooner than you would otherwise. Think about that for a second. Think about just the, the, the intellectual capacity of a one-year-old. At that age, 12 months old, when you tell your child, I'm going to put you in a timeout, what does that even mean to that child? I, I, I'm picking you up and I'm carrying you across the room I'm now placing you in the crib and I'm walking out for three minutes and then I'm coming back in. It doesn't mean anything. That, those, are some, those are some two dots, right? The first dot being the disobedience of the one-year-old. The next dot being the timeout. Those dots are too far away from each other for a one-year-old to connect. There's not gonna be the correlation of, of that actually being an act of discipline, a loving act of discipline, I might add, for the sinful act, the disobedient act that this one-year-old just committed. So if you're going to do timeouts, and if it's going to mean anything, because, because here's the thing, you, you do timeouts with a very young child, and you're actually teaching them what they're correlating, what they're learning is something that is actually counterproductive. They're learning that that that. If they misbehave, they get abandoned. It, it's, it's not being interpreted as love. The correlation is probably, they're probably not even connecting the time out to the discipline at all until they're about two, three years old. And even then, um, it's very hard for them to correlate and say that this is a loving form of discipline. So at one year old, they're just saying, this isn't discipline at all. I'm just randomly being put in my crib. I don't know why. And then at two years old and three years old, they're saying, okay, this is discipline, but... It's more punitive than it is discipline. It's like mom and dad are tired of me and can't stand me. And so they're, they're, they're putting me away and leaving me. Right? So that, that's not helpful. But see, spanking, what it allows you to do is never leave the child. You're right there the whole time, loving the child, holding the child, speaking to the child, and inflicting pain for an instant. See, that's part of the beauty of spanking. Um, I remember my dad, when I was spanked growing up, my dad spanked me well. Spanked me regularly, spanked me well as a Christian man. 
He did the right thing. And he always would say this. He said that spankings should, um, they should hurt, not harm. And that's exactly right. Hurt, not harm. Harm meaning that it, that it leaves some kind of lasting harm. A bruise. God forbid, a broken bone or a cut or a scrape. Um, no, that, that is not the purpose of spanking. If you're harming your child in spanking, um, then you are spanking the wrong way. And you need to uh, humble yourself and just very privately with someone who's trusted in your church, probably a pastor, go and ask for some, some swatting lessons <laughs> you know, and, and learn how to spank in a way that it still hurts. Because if it doesn't hurt, then it defeats the purpose. It needs to hurt. It needs to really hurt. But it definitely shouldn't harm. Right? And so you need to learn how to hurt, not harm. Uh, the key is sting. Right? It stings for a moment. It's, ah! And a couple minutes later, you can hardly remember that, that you were even hurting. Right? That, that's what it is to spank. Now, here's the thing. A timeout, it, it's longer lasting. Um, <laughs> you know, but it's not a surprise to me, honestly, that parents put their children in timeouts. Um, because that's what our society does to adults. See, in the same way that the Bible speaks about um, the rod to spank the wayward child, rebellion is bound up in their heart, but the rod will remove it far from them, right? That the parent that doesn't spank is, is one who doesn't who hates their child. So conversely, the one who spanks, the parent who spanks is loving their child. Well, when it comes to adults, the Bible also says that the rod is for the back of fools. And in that instance, it's not just talking about children. It's talking about criminals, adult fools. The Bible, there is biblical law where you don't throw someone in prison and treat them like a pet. That's dehumanizing. A, a, a public beating, a public beating. I know this gets real controversial. Some of you guys are like, what? Pastor Joel's talking about public beatings? Yes, I am. If a man commits a crime and it's not murder, right, that would be the death penalty. Okay, but it's not murder, so it, it doesn't cost him his life in terms of biblical justice. And it's not theft also, because in the case of theft, with theft, the consequence is double restitution. The consequence is the man needs to pay it back, double and if he can't afford to pay it back double, then he becomes a slave of the person. And there are ways in our modern era to do that, where his garnishes are, wa are, are, are uh, his wages are garnished at, at a certain percentage until it is all paid back. Um, but the point is, if it's some kind of other crime, not theft and not murder, biblically speaking, um, it would be the rod. In some cases, it would be a public flogging. The point is this. What you don't see in biblical justice is people being thrown into a jail cell, a box, a cage, and fed three meals a day and taken outside for a few minutes each day to go on a walk, have some recreational activities, and then come back into their cage, fed another meal, having their clothes changed from time to time, that's how you treat a pet. That's dehumanizing. And, and really, in practical financial terms, what that, what that means is that for those who commit crimes, everybody else who didn't commit the crime has to pay for their mistake. But the Bible doesn't do that. The Bible doesn't punish the innocent for the crime of the guilty. See, time out doesn't surprise me with parents today because we put adults in timeout. It's called prison. That's not actually biblical justice. And that's also not biblical discipline. Biblical discipline is that you pull your, your, your child near, close. You say, I love you, but you are not allowed to behave that way. I'm not sending you away. I'm not abandoning you. And I'm also not going to manipulate you, which some parents do. Emotionally, do you see how that makes me feel? You try to kind of make yourself tear up. You put on a play, you're acting to try to emotionally manipulate your child into obedience. That's certainly not biblical. 
No, biblical discipline is I'm not sending you away. I'm not emotionally manipulating you. I'm pulling you close and I'm going to hurt you for a moment, but not harm you. Because the Bible tells me that this is love. And I'm not going to be so arrogant to think that I know how to love my kids better than God does, or that I that I do, in fact, love my kids more than God does. I'm going to put that sin of arrogance and pride to death. I'm going to obey the scripture and spank him. Here's the beauty of it. Doug Wilson speaks about this. He says um, that 99% of your spankings, if not all of them, should be done by the time the child's five or six years old. So you're not spanking a 15-year-old. All right, by that point, it's too late. See, the beauty of spanking is that it allows you to start discipline early on where the child can correlate, right? They can make that correlation of, of, of diso- their disobedience and this being the consequence for that disobedience, the discipline for it. And you're with them. You're not leaving them. You're holding them close. They can see it as this is discipline for my disobedience. And this is loving discipline. Mom and dad has still loved me. And they can see that very early on. So you can start disciplining your child before it's too late. See, with timeouts and all these other things, uh, there are many Christians, I'm talking about people who love the Lord and and who are in many ways good Christians that I, I love and I think highly of in many regards. But when it comes to parenting in the realm of discipline, not every realm of parenting, but discipline, because they, they just would not spank. They just, they just refused to obey God's word on this one issue of spanking. They couldn't start disciplining their children until they were three, four, five years old. And it's too late. But if you spank, see, when most parents start disciplining their children, for those who trusted God's word with spanking, that's when we're starting to stop discipline, disciplining our children. Sure, there, there was still going to be, the parent's still an authority in the home. There's still going to be certain rules. All, all those things are still going to be in play and there's still going to be some form of discipline. But the beauty of spanking, believing God's word and his promises that the rod will remove rebellion and that spanking is love and that God loves our kids more than we do so we can trust what he says. The beauty of that kind of Christian discipline is that you get to start early and you get to be done early. So when other, your friends and their kids are becoming nightmares in their homes and they're trying to figure out what to do for discipline, your discipline is already starting to round down. That's the beauty. Last thing I'll say with starting early with a one-year-old, spanking lets you do that because the correlation can be made. Um, But also with a one-year-old, have very few rules. It's another Doug Wilson thing. He says that um, in the garden, it's only one rule. Now, technically, there were 11 commandments. We have the 10 commandments that were written on Adam's heart. But there's that one positive precept, which is what? Don't eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Right? So God doesn't place Adam and Eve in a garden and say, don't eat of that tree. Also, don't touch that rock. And also, don't look at that flower. And and yet, that's the kind of environment, that's the the garden that we put a lot of our one, two, and three-year-olds in. Have you noticed that? Think about that for, for a second. How many things in your house are off limits that your kid's not allowed to touch? If it's like 10 things, 20 things, 30 things, you need to change your house. See, one of the the beauties with spanking is this. You've got to be consistent. So whenever there's disobedience, you have to spank. You have to. It can't be sometimes it happens. It's got to be consistent. And then you're probably thinking, well, then I'm going to be spanking my kid all the time. You're saying hurt, don't harm, but I'm going to be spanking my kid a a thousand times a day and (laughs) they're going to die. No, here's how you solve that problem. Don't have so many rules, especially when your kids are little. So with your one-year-old, you should only have maybe one or two rules. The rule can be don't throw your food off the high chair. Right? And the big rule that I would advocate for early on with any child is no fits. That's always been the number one rule for me and my three little girls in my house. No matter what happens, you are not allowed to throw a fit. Throwing a fit will immediately get you a spanking. And you can start that very early on. And so how, how, how do you... 
how do you have the spanking, start early on with your children, um, and be consistent, but also not be spanking a hundred times a day, <laughs> you know, have less rules. Which means, parents, you're going to have to change your lives for your kids. Uh, that nice vase that you have on the second shelf from the ground, you've got a two-year-old. You just don't get to have that anymore. Either they get to touch it and break it, or you have to make it a rule. And then there's another rule. and there's, like, you, you, That's not fair. God put Adam and Eve in the garden with very few things off limits. Right? And in the same way, I think we need to set our kids up for success by not weighing them down with a million rules, but with a few rules that we do give them being very consistent in our discipline. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching this video. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, uh, we hope that you'll take a moment and subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can watch more content like this. Also, take a moment and give this video a like so that it can reach more people. And take a moment and click on the bell so that you'll be notified whenever we come out with new content. Thanks so much. God bless.